I think like uh, everyone that's on these board, this board or the advisory board, it was uh, interesting or, or it was timely to be reminded of the oath that we all take that Mr. Thomas took this morning, which is to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I do think the events of the last week brought that oath home with a gravity that none of us could have anticipated. So it, um, um, yeah, it, uh, the events I think in the Capitol were deeply troubling. Um, the Park Service goes on and we're gonna do our part to help the nation heal as we go forward. Um, hopefully these are, these are sites and objectives that everyone can get behind. Um, back to, to the local um, updates from here. Um, I'll start out with um, uh, one, 78, who it was an interesting lion that uh, ended up making it all the way to the um, to the Santa Susanas. And uh, across the five, a couple of times, um, that animal was uh, uh, killed uh, due to an auto collision on a secondary road. Um, we are uh, analyzing sperm viability, since it was birthed in the Santa Monica, Simi Hills area, to see uh, we should have those results sometime soon. Um, on, a more, uh, on an upbeat note, we've had some great video programming lately, and if people uh, would like to check it out, they can go to our Facebook page. We had a, um, a reading by uh, Adriana uh, Barrera, who's one of our youth program supervisors. She read the book, uh, Oso Quiere Volar, and I apologize, Irma, I learned French. Uh, my French is much better than Spanish, and I probably just mutilated that. Um, but um, uh, that's a reading, and we've been uh, in including more Spanish language programming uh, into our um, into our virtual programming, and um, and we've been doing reading with a ranger, and so this is great. Adriana's great, fantastic uh, youth leader and um, graphic artist. We also um, this body uh, ha had acquired Solstice Canyon for conservation purposes, and there's a, a programming piece um, not on Tropical Terrace, which was the um, which we'll do in a future program which was built by Paul Williams for Fred Roberts. Uh, Paul Williams being an um, extremely prolific Los Angeles-based architect. Um, the Rodan House, which is a small stone structure further up the canyon. There's a, a we did a program on that. Um, many organizations were dealing with the pandemic and as spread becomes uh, more common uh, with quite a few uh, quarantine cases. We've had no workplace transmission yet. However, um, people's family members, especially family members that are essential workers, um, uh, you know, have contracted the the, um, the virus, and so we're managing we're managing that. Um, I think over the last couple of months, we've had um, um, we have had two employees positive, but uh, nine quarantine uh, cases of quarantine. The um, we, the Great American Outdoors Act, which I, I believe folks knew about last year, we're preparing our packages for um, for that funding source. And uh, the package we're going to submit is for the rehabilitation of the Circle X uh, campground and the Circle X area. So, so stay tuned. We won't uh, we won't know whether that's successful until later this year. The last thing I just wanted to mention was um, was about housing. The Park Service is seeking or looking for ways to improve to increase our housing inventory. Um, I'm sure Supervisor Parks has more information on this topic, but um, we're looking at um, Ventura, Ventura County housing. Um, it appears that over the last 10 years, the cost, the average rental cost has gone up 45%, um, which makes it extremely difficult, especially for our um, employees at the journey person's level and below to afford housing. and um, we are rebuilding uh, units lost to the fire. Our units are very simple and therefore they're more affordable. They don't come with amenities that a lot of folks would uh, would get. Great setting, but um, um, but no workout facilities or pool or anything like that. And for that reason, they are more affordable. We do charge market rates, just so folks know. We do charge a market rate that's based on the, uh, that gets increased with the consumer price index. Um, but nonetheless, our units are more affordable than what we can find in the local community. 
and we are hoping to increase, as I noted, our housing inventory. Um, the vacancy rate, I guess, in Ventura County, um, and I um, only had time to look at Ventura County is writing up the justification is very somewhere from below 3% to 5%, which is an extremely tight rental market. And, um, and that's all I had. Thank you. Are any questions? Our peak in use since the pandemic has started. Um, a lot of impacts to the resources from trash and human waste. We're trying to get our arms around it, but um, each weekend brings a lot of challenges. I'm sure um, others who are managing whether state parks or, or David with Park Services feel the same kind of impacts, but it's been constant. Um, uh, a lot of folks coming to the forest um, in a lot of use, so it's been pretty, um, pretty challenging for the workforce this year in light of the pandemic. And I'd say um, also all of our developed sites have been closed. Uh, when the governor's newest um, stay-at-home order came out, they were closed and continue to be closed, not just down on the Angeles, but um, on all the national forests here in California. So we're trying to stay in line with the governor's stay-at-home order. But our undeveloped sites are still open trails and all that. So um, continue to see folks out there along the way. The other part, too, is uh, most of our offices have been closed since the original stay-at-home order back in March. So uh, none of the offices have been open. Uh, most of the employees, except our firefighters, are um, maximizing the telework. And we'll probably continue in that vein until we get a higher vaccination rate um, within the workforce. So within USDA's guidelines, we're at what we call phase zero. Um, very minimal presence at the um, offices, mainly for security, and trying to keep people separated along the way. Uh, the second thing I wanted to just touch base on was um, this past fire season. We've had um, quite a few fires on the Angeles. Um, Bobcat is probably the most prevalent one that people will remember in the front country, but it did go all the way across the forest up towards Palmdale. So in general, of the four or five major fires that we had this year, about 23% of the forest was impacted. Uh, so it was a pretty significant fire year for us along the way. The um, perimeter of the Bobcat fire, which um, goes up to Mount Wilson and then through San Gabriel, the West Fork, and then north um, across Highway 2, most of that area is closed. There's a closure order in place. And that closure order won't be lifted till February of 2022. The goal there is to give um, the resources some time to kind of heal um, and also for some of the um, landscape to settle. So it's going to be a kind of a quiet year in certain parts, but um, other parts will be impacted. The other thing we're doing is we're working on what we call burnt area emergency response. Um, trying to get work um, done within the burnt area on certain areas of impact. It, we can't obviously um, do work across all of the acreage, but there are certain areas that we're really trying to focus on along the way. And I think our biggest concern right now with the season is um, the continued dry and warm weather um, that's coming in. While it's, while it's very nice to enjoy, um, we're worried about it from a fire perspective. And then we're also hoping for rain, but not too hard because um, um, debris flows. Um, that is a big concern of ours. We have um, put together um, a number of presentations across both the front country with the community's um, leaders, as well as on the um, northern end of the forest, just letting them know what the potential impacts could be if we get um, some heavy rains along the way. And then the last piece I'll touch base on is um, pandemic management. Uh, David talked about it and Jerry did too. Um, we do have quite a number of cases. We've had about 75 to 80 cases here on the force. Uh, and we have had worker to worker transmission. And that's a lot of it is because we have the largest firefighting organization in the forest service. I have about 325 firefighters and those folks are on um, uh, 24 seven at times. And um, they do travel in very um, tight, confined spaces. Our engines, if you see them driving down the highway, usually contain five people. So they're wearing masks, but when you're hitting those vehicles for that many hours, it's difficult for um, to try to not 
if someone has COVID for it to um, not spread within the workforce. So we've had a few clusters. We work very closely with our regional office and we try to have folks um, as soon as identified self-isolate along the way. Um, about half our workforce elected to um, firefighting workforce. We were given the opportunity for vaccinations and about half the workforce elected to be vaccinated. Um, and the rationale behind that was not just that they're firefighters, but if you look at the Angeles National Forest, it's a very consolidated landscape. There's very few communities within the, um, the boundary of the Angeles. And so our firefighters are really also the first responders as EMTs. So they're on every accident um, that occurs. Um, usually they'll be the first ones there when um, either city or county or local paramedics come, they'll step back and assist. But um, that could be anywhere from 15 minutes to well over an hour, depending on where it's at on the forest. And the forest tends to get at least one significant wreck, whether it's a motorcycle or a vehicle, um, at least once a week, plus numerous other small accidents. So um, the rationale is that they were vaccinated as part of group 1A. Um, the others, it's not so much um, anti-vaxxers as much as not really understanding um, the um, vaccine. So we've been providing them information so that they can make informed decisions along the way. And we continue to work with the county to see um, does the next group that we really want to get out and get vaccinated is what we call our rec techs. They're the ones that are out um, interacting with the public on a daily basis, uh, dealing with trash, human waste. And so we really want to get them vaccinated as soon as possible. And then I guess my last piece, David reminded me, was um, GAOA. We are putting together our package. Um, hopefully, we'll see some um, additional projects funded. Bishop F8 to E7. In, um, in the coming um, year. That's the end of my report, unless there's any questions. This is uh, the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, uh, the Canal Recreation and Park District, and the Rancho Simi Recreation and Park District. Uh, the JPA is a joint powers agreement uh, between uh, different entities when one particular entity can't accomplish tasks that need to be accomplished. So those three entities, the Conservancy, Canal Rec and Park, and Rancho Simi Rec and Park got together uh, knowing they could uh, together accomplish a lot more, which as you can see, since the 80s, we've accomplished uh, so very much. And also uh, on the report, uh, we always have the various uh, divisions uh, listed. And uh, in today's report, there's six uh, listed, but there's actually uh, 12 different um, divisions and or departments that the MRCA um, has in its operations. So at every MRCA board meeting, all 12 uh, various uh, divisions or departments make a report. So in general, that's the MRCA. And uh, let me start off with a quick summary because of the time, and I know there's a lot of public, I'll just start off with the fire division during our off season station and vehicle maintenance is still ongoing while remaining fire ready. Uh, we are gearing up uh, for developing plans for the 2021 brushing season, which should begin in a few days. And unfortunately, um, because of the pandemic, our fire division has not been um, invited to participate in the per annual prescribed burn up in Monterey Cal County. And we used to, uh, not used to, we use that for a, a training exercise for fire, firefighting. Um, I'm gonna skip down to uh, developed resources. The developed resources division uh, charged with park operation and maintenance of all MRCA flagship parks continue to report an unprecedented number of visitors is also reflected in the uh, national and state parks uh, report. Um, the division aims to continue permitting pandemic-friendly events to provide a revenue stream uh, that will support the operation of these parks. And that revenue stream is so important 
uh, for the benefit of keeping those parks and facilities uh, open and in top condition. So I'd like to give a quick shout out to our head of our uh, developed resources uh, division, Maribel. Um, park development and watershed planning and RFP for community engagement has been released for the Taylor Yard Paseo Del Rio project. Uh, proposals are due on February 5th of 2021. In January, Outward Bound Adventures will begin construction for a new um, connector trail in Altadena, which is near the Via Verde the development. And last, I'm going to cover the natural resource and planning. Um, as noted, we had four acquisitions uh, from uh, Dixie Canyon Point, two ac uh, ac acres, Hathaway, uh, 11, over 1,100 acres, Robinson S, districts along the Santa Clarita River, uh, 17, almost 18 acres, and um, also uh, Escondido Beach and Malibu, uh, five acres. And I'd also like to give another shout out to the head of our coastal access uh, group, uh, Elena. And um, back real quickly to the Hathaway Ranch. Um, as noted, it's 11, over 1,100 acres and combined because we also had property, existing property uh, there in the Hathaway uh, Ranch. So we now have a close to a total of 2,400 uh, acres. And that's uh, uh, in partnership with the Trust for Public Land. And um, and it's also the ho home of the California condors. So in quick uh, a geographic reference, that's near um, Cass State and Lake Piru for anybody who would like to uh, check that out. So that concludes my report, Steve.